My name is Navi Sanga. I'm a stroke neurologist outside of Los Angeles from Kaiser Permanente. Currently, I'm the lead stroke neurologist for all of Kaiser Southern California. Um, I lead the stroke program and the telestroke program. I did uh, telestroke research at the University of Texas for a couple of years. We were doing research on how stroke care was being provided in a rural setting. You can have an emergent subspecialty care physician see you in real time, make real-time decisions and give the therapeutic interventions that you need for a patient who's having stroke, for example TPA, and or triage them for another therapy known as thrombectomy emergently. And in most rural settings, you don't really necessarily have a neurologist, let alone a vascular neurologist, at that small hospital. The difference between my work at the University of Texas and at Kaiser Permanente is that at Kaiser Permanente, all of our telestroke sites are actually urban high volume sites. Um, with multiple cases happening at the same time. And it's really um, important for us to implement different technologies to help the physicians on both ends augment the patient's care. The face of stroke care has changed so much in the last four to five years. You really want a subspecialist seeing these patients, making the determination, looking at the images themselves, and then seeing what type of therapies um, could they actually receive. We've grown greatly since then. And so normally about six to eight percent of patients receive TPA in the U.S. who are TPA eligible. Within the Kaiser Permanente system, we're able to get about 24% of our stroke patients TPA, and that's really been because of the technology which we've been able to bring in. MaxQ is an artificial intelligence technology which allows the automated interpretation of CT scans to ensure that there is no hemorrhage on the CT scan, or to actually let us know that there is a hemorrhage on the CT scan. So I'd like to tell a story about a recent patient, a 77-year-old woman who presented to our urgent care recently. Uh, she, was, she had acute right face, arm and leg numbness, went to our urgent care, saw an urgent care physician who correctly identified that she was having stroke-like symptoms. He ordered a STAT CT scan for the patient and it was interpreted as negative. This urgent care physician called the stroke team and we told him to call 911 so the patient could be rapidly transported to our ER so we can institute emergent therapy such as TPA. When the patient got to us, we had access to the CT scan and myself and a radiology colleague reviewed it in person and we found that the patient actually had a small hemorrhage. Luckily, we were able to catch that hemorrhage and the patient did not get TPA. However, unfortunately, right in front of our eyes, the patient began to deteriorate. We got a repeat stat CT scan and we found was that small hemorrhage expanded to a much larger hemorrhage. Technologies like MaxQ may have been able to prevent this, where if we were able to catch the hemorrhage up front, we would have informed the urgent care physician to institute therapies such as rapid blood pressure control, which may have decreased the risk of the hematoma expansion and the worst outcome that the patient sustained. What we did is we took that patient's image and we ran it through MaxQ and we found that MaxQ was actually able to accurately identify the small hemorrhage which would have likely changed the patient's outcome. Primary Stroke Center's um, team may have an ED physician, a radiologist, and a general neurologist. Actually, they may not even have a neurologist, and the decision may just be made for stroke care by our ED colleagues and our radiology colleagues working together. At a comprehensive center stroke level, it's usually a larger team where you have an ED physician, usually a neurologist or a vascular neurologist, and a neuroradiologist, of course with our nursing teams incorporated within that to help make the decisions for the patient's care. Now the Comprehensive Stroke Center can be of two different um, varieties as well, an academic and a non-academic. At the academic level, we may also have trainees making decisions on interpretations of the scans which are needed to treat patients, as well as, on the other side, trainees who are making clinical decisions such as administering TPA based on the scan that, that they're seeing and the patient that, that's in front of them. I think it's a vital um, relationship for a stroke center to work well and also for the patient to be treated well. It's really important to be very collegial and understand that we're working together as a team because of the fact that you're looking at images rapidly and you want to make emergent decisions and so wherever you are you want to ensure that your radiologist or neuroradiologist is really interpreting that image very quickly and there's a time limit on which they can turn it around. And so within our centers, what we've done is that because of the fact that our radiologists and neuroradiologists have been very willing to work with our groups, they put a time limit where they get a flag that says this is a code stroke case and they'll turn it around within 10 to 15 minutes, a maximum of 15 minutes from when the image drops in to their, um, to their queue. And then after that, they'll actually send a message quickly back to the ER physician or to the neurologist, letting them know what their interpretation of the image is. Our team or the stroke team 
evaluating the patient's CT scan to see if it's free of hemorrhage and then to go ahead and administer um, Altaplace or TPA for that patient. Recently we had a patient who's having an acute ischemic stroke. The patient was at home, suddenly developed difficulty speaking and left-sided weakness. Um, also had a history of cancer as well. The patient came to us, our stroke team evaluated the patient in person, and we found that yes, the patient was having a stroke, rapidly whisked the patient off to the CT scanner, and um, one of our stroke team members interpreted the CT scan on the actual CT scan monitor itself, and um, it looked like the patient was, did not have a large intracerebral hemorrhage and began to administer IV TPA. When the image was reviewed by a radiologist who quickly called us back and informed us that it looked like the patient did have a small subtle subdural hemorrhage, the TPA was stopped and um, we rapidly reversed the TPA. Luckily, the patient didn't have any adverse events. However, this was a big opportunity for improvement. And so um, what we did is that we ran this case through um, the MaxU technology and we found that it did actually accurately capture the subdural hemorrhage and it would have prevented the false administration of TPA um, in that patient. So one of the important things to understand when you're incorporating a new technology within your system is to ensure that there's seamless integration of the technology with your current imaging modalities. So in Kaiser Permanente, we use GE as the primary modality for our CT scans. And so Max-Q has a seamless integration with the GE technology. The most important factors for reducing the door to needle time for TPA is getting the patient emergently to the CT scan and getting their CT scan interpreted emergently as well. If you're looking at the scan multiple times, making sure the patient hasn't had an hemorrhage, that's going to increase the time in which you're putting out the interpretation. However, having augmented technology like Max-Q may allow you to really look at the scan quickly once, look at the Max-Q interpretation to say, yes, I feel confident, comfortable, this patient is not having intracerebral hemorrhage, and we can proceed with the administration of TPA. At Kaiser Permanente, we're going to be embarking on a clinical trial around mid-December after we receive training from our MaxQ colleagues um, with our radiologists and our neurologists and our technologists as well. And then we um, expect the trial to go for at least three to six months depending upon the volume of CT scans that we get. And that really allows the images to be sent to multiple places, allowing any physician to view the images and treat acutely treat our stroke patients. For example, if they're sitting in the actual CT scanner suite, they can look at the images on the actual CT scanner computer versus our radiology colleagues who would also receive the images on the packs at their location or teleneurologists who's sitting at home looking at the images on their laptops. This seamless integration allows multi a multifaceted approach to the patient's stroke care.